Okay, it is time to get our custom sound library going on our external media drive and then get that information imported into Fairlight. So as you're recording Foley sounds and you've got sounds that you want to keep that are good and you want to keep them for other projects or if you're downloading or purchasing sounds from other places like Pro Sound Effects or SoundSnap, then you want to get that stuff organized on your drive. And here's an example of my sound library. I have it organized like this. This is subjective, whatever makes sense for you. But for example, I have a human folder, and in here I have footsteps. And in there, different folders to organize my footsteps, okay? Now, as you might imagine, going through all of this to look for sounds when you have a larger library can be time consuming. I mean, you gotta wade through all these, look for some footsteps, listen to them, and then import them into your project and add them to the timeline, et cetera, et cetera. But the good news is Fairlight has a sound library feature that makes this extremely easy. So let me jump out of here. Up here, we have our sound library. And what this does, it lets us easily search for sounds, listen to them, and even audition them in the timeline before we commit to using them. It saves so much time. And so what I'm gonna show you is how to set up your own custom sound library and import that into Fairlight so it's working in an optimal way. And to do this lesson, you don't have to have a huge sound library like I have right now. You can just have a few sounds you've downloaded from SoundSnap. Just organize them in a way that makes sense. And then here's what we need to do. In Resolve, just hit Shift-1. It brings up your projects. If your view doesn't look like this, it probably looks like this. So just click this little icon here by Projects, and it's gonna show your databases. By default, your local database is where all of your projects are kept. And you see, I have one here for Theater 11 Sounds. So I'm gonna add another one to show you how this is done. Actually, before we do this, let's back up your local database. What we're doing shouldn't hurt anything with your local database, but let's just be safe. Click on that and click the little I and then click back up. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna back it up to. In fact, this is something that you wanna do regularly. Yes, we've talked about backing up our project, but I haven't shown you how to back up the entire database. And so this is handy. I'm gonna to go to my media drive. I'm gonna to go to resolve original media, and then I'm gonna create a new folder called backups. And in there, I'm gonna create one called database. And then I'm gonna create one more subfolder with today's date. Perfect. Click save and click backup. And it shouldn't take too long. All right, now let's click this to go back and click Add Project Library. And name it whatever makes sense for you, like I named mine Theater 11 Sounds. And then click Browse. And my recommendation is to store this project within your sound library so that it's all in one spot. So I'm gonna go to Theater 11 Pictures, go to my Theater 11 Sound Library. Here's all my sounds. And I'm gonna create a new folder called Write and Direct Sounds. I'm naming things the same so it's easy to see what's what. Click Create and click Open. And now click Create. There we go. Now this database is like our local database. You could create film projects in here, but that's not the purpose of this. So click back on Local Database and open your movie back up. Okay, now with that done, if we go back to our sound library, and again, this is a good keyboard mapping to do because you're going in and out of this a lot. So just Command Option K on Mac, and then under Commands, look for Application, Workspace, and then scroll down to Show Panel and Workspace. Hit that arrow, and there's Sound Library. You can see I have that mapped. You can just click plus and put whatever keyboard combination you want in there, and then save that. And now, on mine, I hit Shift-W, and there we go. And then I'm gonna click this icon, which allows me to choose which library I wanna use. Right now it's on Local Database. I'm gonna choose my new Write and Direct Sounds. And now we connect this database with our actual sound library. So select that, click Add Library, and now we're gonna to browse to our external drive, to our sound library, and click Open. So now it's gonna scan all the files in your sound library and create an index of all those sounds. It's not actually importing them, it's just creating an index of everything that's in there. And there we go. I sped that up, but over 4,000 clips on my system only took like 45 seconds. Cool. Now let's look at a scene in Reckoning that needs some sound. So we're outside and Rose Lawson is doing target practice with apples on a fence. And I don't have any production sound for this. It was all MOS. So we need ambience, we need a gunshot, we need her cocking the gun, etc. So my playhead is already right there. I'm gonna go up here and search for gun cock. And there we go. So in my sound library, I have a bunch of sounds. So I'm just gonna select one of these and I have play, stop, and loop controls, pretty straightforward. Let's just say that works. Here's what I can do. I'm gonna drag this over to give me some more room and I can mark an in and an out and literally just drag that down. 
However, what does that do? Well, it actually creates a clip in my project for that sound. And what if I just wanted to try that sound out? I didn't want it in the project. This is where the audition function comes in. So let me jump out of the sound library. I'm gonna go back to Media Pool, which I have mapped to Shift Q. And look, here it is. And so that's just one clip, no big deal. But when you're doing sound design on your film, you're gonna check out a lot of different sounds and you may not want them all in here if you're not using them. So let's go back to the sound library and let's audition instead of just adding it in. So I'm gonna remove this and leave my playhead in that general area and then I'm going to clear my in and out and let's just choose any of these. So what you need to do is position your the red bar just after the clip that you want. And then this icon here, set sync point, if you click that, you'll see a little green bar appear, right? And now back here, let's set an out point and then set an in point. And then I'm going to drag this back so we can see what's going on over here in our timeline. Let's choose Foley 3 and click the track and then click audition. And there it is. And so now what I can do is I can listen to it, I can drag it around and position it and see if it works. And then if I like it, I can say confirm. If I don't like it, I can say cancel. If I say cancel, it's not gonna put the clip in my project, which is really nice if I don't wanna use it. If I choose confirm, it's gonna put it in. And here's a little note. Whatever bin you're in when you're doing this, that's where the sounds are going to be added. So for example, I have a sounds bin, but I wasn't in it. So it just added it in my master bin, which is not what I want. So I should have had sounds selected and then it would have put it in there. So I'm just gonna drag this one in. And then before we do another one, I'm gonna click sounds. Make sense? Okay, something that's really important that you need to know. You're constantly building your sound library, right? Whether you're recording fully sounds or downloading and purchasing more sounds, you're constantly building this. Those changes will not automatically go into the Fairlight Index. Now, I would love it if there was some type of rescan feature that you could tell it to do, but right now, to my knowledge, that doesn't exist, but what you have to do isn't that complicated. Let's say I couldn't find a good gun click, all right? So I'm gonna go to Sound Snap. I'm already signed in, so I'm gonna search for, how about Colt Guncock? Now, obviously, I can filter with the tags and stuff like that. In fact, Revolver, that's good. Okay, okay, that one works great. So I'm gonna download that. I'm gonna go to my sound library. Taking the time to do this in an organized fashion will save you later. Don't just download them to your downloads folder. Put them where they need to go. So I'm gonna to go to Handling and save it there. Okay, so now it's in my sound library, but Fairlight will not see it yet. Here's what you have to do. You have to go to your sound library and go to that project that we created. So I created Write and Direct Sounds. Then go to the Projects folder, and we're looking for soundlib.db. This is the index. If you move that to the trash, I'm gonna empty the trash, I'm gonna jump back into Fairlight, and then I'm gonna set it back to my local database and then choose Write and Direct Sounds again. It says Add Library, no library connected. So I just do the same thing. Add Library, go to my data drive, go to the library and click Open. So that might sound a little tedious, but it's not a big deal because it does it really fast. And what I will do if I'm right in the middle of sound design and I don't have time for a rescan, what I'll do when I download the file, I'll just take note of what the file name is and just manually go to Finder and add that to the project. But when I get to a point where I've downloaded a lot of stuff, then I'll just re-index it, take a 30 second break from the movie, and then come back and it's done. So I'm gonna go back to Sound Snap, and here's the sound I downloaded. I'm gonna copy that, jump back into here, and search. Nothing came up, why not? Well, here's the thing. This is Sound Snap's description of this sound file. If you click the down arrow here, they'll give you more information. Here's the actual file name. Copy that, paste that in, voila, there it is. The Fairlight Sound Library will save you so much time. You're gonna use this project after project and eventually you'll have a really robust sound library that meets a lot of the needs for your different films. Now we're gonna go into sound effects and ambience in the next lesson and just look at a scene from Reckoning that needs a lot of work. Most of it was shot MOS and so we'll see how to make it sound right. Hit up the community if you have any questions and I'll see you in that next lesson very soon.